Good evening, Lizzie Boys, and welcome back to my channel. So last night, I had originally filmed this video, but I went through it and I realized that so much information in it was wrong that I would rather just remake it now. So last night, some images were discovered by a user named Mini.Plastic on Instagram. I talked to them, they sent me the pictures, they sent me the portfolio that they found the pictures on of what were supposed to be Mattel's take on brats. Um, I've mentioned these briefly before in another video. I don't remember when. But originally, all that had been found were the heads and bodies, and it was confirmed by Garrett Sander that these heads and bodies were in fact for the Mattel iteration of Bratz during this period in 2009-ish, 2010, where they were supposed to, where they like acquired the rights to Bratz through a bunch of lawsuits. Um, the short of the situation is that basically the person who had the idea for Bratz the original concept for it. Um, they worked for Mattel at the time. I don't know if they pitched the idea and if it got rejected or not, but I heard that's what happened. So they basically took the idea to MGA, Isaac Larian adored it, and there, the rest is history. Bratz was produced by MGA, became very popular. When Mattel saw this, they received an anonymous tip that the real creator of Bratz was not Isaac Larian, as the company had been claiming, because he had said that it was inspired by, um, you know, I don't remember. But basically, they were saying that their CEO, Isaac Larian, had the idea for Bratz, that um, Yasmin was named after his daughter, which is true, because originally her name was supposed to be Lupe. But um, I'm getting off topic. Basically, the Mattel Bratz were found. Someone was just looking for my scene art, and they uncovered these concepts of the dolls in the box. Like, these are real sample photos. So let's take a look at them. So here is a screenshot from the portfolio that these images were found under. The designer is named Jamie Deanda, and this is their Squarespace. I will link this in the uh, description of the video, but if you, if any of you decide to try to contact this um, designer, please be respectful. Um, I don't know. I'm just worried now that like this is kind of like public now that people have like really discovered their square Squarespace. I'm so bad at pronouncing words. I'm sorry. I have like a really minor speech impediment. But um, basically, um, don't harass this designer. Don't be like, oh, do you have any pictures? Do you have any pictures? Send us pictures. Like you can respectfully ask them. Obviously, be like, hey, we saw that you designed Mattel brats. Uh, do you have any more pictures of them? Or like, do you even have one of them for us to like see more pictures of? You know. But just keep it respectful. Definitely don't harass them or anything. So with that, let's get into looking at these pictures individually and up close. So here we have a picture of what would have been the new Core 4. Um, you may notice that three names have been changed, Sasha to Nia, Yasmin to Isabel, and Chloe to Logan. Jade stayed the same. Um, the reason that I've heard people give for this is because Mattel in their lawsuit won the original concept of Bratz, and the original concept of Bratz still featured the name Jade. So Yasmin, Chloe, and Sasha were trademarked by MGA, they were not a part of the original concept, so, you know, they couldn't use those names. But Jade was not, so they were still able to use Jade. All in all, I don't want to shit on these too much because obviously they're never gonna be, they're never gonna be, like, released widely. Um, obviously the rights to Bratz went back to MGA, but, um, I really do kind of like the package design. Like, it's so 2010s, like, it's aggressively 2010s, but it's kind of, it's really kind of cute. I really like the artwork. Um, I think the text bubble stuff all over it is a little cringeworthy, but kind of has a bit of, like, a nostalgic energy to it, you know? All in all, I don't think it's that bad. But let's start looking at these dolls individually. Starting off with Nia, some may recognize that name, and if you are a My Scene collector, then it definitely makes sense that you do, because Nia was the name of a My Scene character. I don't know why they reused the name, but I'm guessing that if people had seen this, this would have fueled the theory that these were supposed to be a, um, you know, a My Scene reboot, because that was what people thought these might have been at first, when those heads leaked, and I can definitely see it. These heads also still have the energy of Monster High. Um, Garrett Sander, in his original, like, prototypes for the Monster High dolls, where they're, like, humanoid and more Barbie-like, 
those dolls are using heads that were unreleased, but I'm thinking that it's possible that these heads might have still been floating around at Mattel, and Garrett might have liked the sculpt, and he might have been like, hey, we should do something like this. Or maybe someone else on his team was like, hey, we should do something like this. I mean, honestly, I don't know. I'm just theorizing here. If I'm wrong, feel free to correct me. But um, I do want to comment on the package design. I definitely see why the designer kept these on their portfolio. The package is really cute. Um, I would definitely be proud of this if I designed it. It's really cute. It's aggressively 2010s, yes, but it's so stylized. It's definitely not better than like original Bratz packaging, not in any way, but I don't think it's ugly, you know? I think it's cute. I do really like the artwork. Um, it's cute. I like the way the expressions look. It doesn't look like um, Bratz artwork though. It gives me more of the energy of like this game that was made by Hasbro, I believe, called um, Dream Life. It was like a plug and play game. It really gives me the energy of Dream Life. <laughs> I can't even explain why. But um, I do want to point out another interesting thing here. If you look down by the doll's feet, you will see that it says brand logo location, but right underneath it, you can see that it's like a new version of the Bratz logo. They had to make a new one because of um, the legal the legal battles, you know? And I'm guessing they couldn't, like, it has to be censored for legal purposes. So who knows? Maybe the designer has uncensored versions and that's what people will get if they email them, like, without the censorship down there. But I guess it could also get them in legal trouble. So they might not exist anymore. I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's move on to the next one. I just want to apologize if you hear any loud noises in the background. It's super fucking hot in my room, so I have my fan up at max. Um, anyway, this is Isabel. She would have been Yasmin's replacement. And not a big fan of the outfit. I don't want to criticize too much, though, because once again, these are never coming out, so there's no reason to criticize them. Um, they, she does have earrings, which is cool. I don't like the bodies of these dolls. Most of the time when people get unreleased um, Mattel Bratz heads, they put them on Ever After High bodies. And I definitely see why. They look a little weird on their own bodies. If anything, I don't think these dolls look like Bratz. I think they look like Bratz kids. This looks more like a Bratz kids reboot than it does anything else. So if I had seen these on the shelves, I would have been like, why did they reboot Bratz kids? Those were already really ugly. Yeah, they really do look like Bratz kids. I think I have a point there. Uh, one thing I did notice is that their shoes seem to be more similar to my scene shoes than they are original Bratz shoes. Just based on the fact that it looks like these dolls would have regular feet underneath those shoes. I don't think they did the peg feet thing. So, that's interesting. Overall, I don't think Isabelle's that cute. I mean, I like her hair, it's just something about her face looks really off more so than the others. Sorry, Isabel. <laughs> I feel so mean. It's like I'm bullying this doll that never even got to see the light of day except for people who found them online a couple years ago. Yeah. Let's move on to Jade. So here we have Jade, and honestly, I don't want to lie to you guys, I would probably buy her. If I had the opportunity to buy a Mattel Bratz Jade head, I would take it. Like, something about her screening just works for me. I like it. She looks like... I don't know how to explain it, I just like the way that they did her face. I think it's because her eyes look the most like actual Bratz eyes if that makes sense, because they still have this weird, like, Monster High Ever After High mishmash energy, but it just feels more like a Bratz doll to me. And I do like the way they designed her. Like, the shoes are ugly. They're god-awful. Those are terrible shoes. But I kind of like her shirt. I like the little green hoops they gave her. And I like the way they did her hair, even though I'm not a big fan of the bangs. I usually like bangs, but here they just look a little choppy and weird. I really like her screening, though. It just... It looks nice. <laughs> I like it. Um, if any of you like her, feel free to agree with me in the comments because I'm looking for more Mattel Bratz Jade fans. She she looks good. I like her. And finally, we reach Logan. Um, the main thing I know Logan for is the fact that some person a couple years ago, I think it's like two years ago now at this point, maybe, all I know is that someone paid $800 for her head on eBay. 
when I say Bratz fans are suspiciously rich, this is the kind of shit I'm talking about. I mean, like, who has $800 to spend on a head like that? It's insane. But, um, Logan's kind of cute. I don't dislike her. Her shirt is kind of cute. I would probably wear that myself. I hate to admit that. But if the shirt had, like, honed in more on the yellow, I could definitely see myself wearing that. Uh, they all seem to have very similar outfits, with like a shirt that's long enough to be a dress if you lose the pants, and then the glitter pants, and then like a pair of like mycene looking shoes. God, their limbs are like so bone thin, it's jarring. <laughs> I really like the package design though. I've already said that, but I still really like it. Um, we got to see the back of Logan's box, and there's a little picture of the four girls together. And they're all texting each other, saying vague words like sassy. Uh, I can't read what the yellow bubble says, but someone says fashionable and someone else says friendly? I don't know. I'm not- my eyesight's not very good. Granted, these pictures are also kind of blurry. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's interesting to look at, but this isn't all we have. We have more lines to look at because they had like- at least three lines planned, it's crazy. They had this team shopping two-pack planned with Logan and Isabel. And here we get a better look at their artworks. I like Logan's artwork. Something about Isabel's makes her look like a Disney villain. I don't know how to explain it, she just looks like a Disney villain here. It just has like a very Disney-esque art style, I feel like. But I guess that's kind of what Mattel was known for at the time, making Disney dolls. There's a couple decently cute fashions here. Like, I like Isabel's shirt, the pants aren't so bad. Meanwhile, Logan is wearing the most aggressively 2010 outfits outfit that I've ever seen. All she needs is a random scarf and like some streaks in her hair. <laughs> Their shoes are definitely my scene shoes though, just based on the way Logan's look behind the brand logo location, you know? And here we have two dolls that honestly, I would buy. Like, Jade's bikini here looks very cheap. It looks insanely cheap, like it looks like it's made of duct tape. But when you look at Logan, I really like her heart-shaped sunglasses. Her bathing suit kind of gives me my scene energy, and I kind of like it. Their little bags are adorable too. They don't look like they're made of plastic either, like mostly plastic at least, so it's cute. I like it. They got little mp3 players. These are actually kind of adorable. They're never gonna hit shelves, obviously. They're never going to- I doubt anyone could ever find these in this condition. Because chances are they only made a couple to take pictures like this. So who even knows what became of these after. But if I could get my hands on either of these, I would be a very happy Lizzie. They're kind of cute. Maybe I should just recreate them in some way. Um, I have to say I like Jade's glasses and I like Logan's sunglasses. But it does look like Jade is on a um, Isabel. It took me a second to remember her name. It looks like she's on an Isabel body for some reason, because her face skin tone does not match her body skin tone, so strange. I don't know why they did that, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it matters that much anyway. There's also this electric outfits line in which uh, we have the pictures for Logan and Nia, and once again, these two are unironically kind of cute. I would like to have them. Um, I think one of my friends actually has the Nia here, which is really cool. Because, as I mentioned, a lot of people were able to get- well, not a lot of people, it's more like some lucky people were able to get their hands on Mattel Bratz sample heads, as well as the bodies. But most of them choose to rebody them on Ever After High bodies because the proportions just look better. I like Logan's dress here, and I like Nia's as well. And in this picture down here from the back of the box, we're able to see that Isabel and, um, Jade. God, how did I just forget Jade? I'm so dumb. But, um, Jade looks really cute here. Um, I don't know if it's just the background or something, but her hairstyle looks like it's more detailed. I like the outfit that I can see. It's cute. These look kind of cute. Again, though, I really don't want to be defending this because of the scummy way that Mattel was going after MGA at the time. Obviously, I'm very glad that brats ended up in the right hands going back to MGA because Mattel was just being petty during this period. I mean, obviously both brands have been petty towards each other, 
but I feel like this is the pettiest either of them ever got, this whole lawsuit. Mattel was out of line, I feel like, during that time. I think they've kind of gotten better, not really, because the CEO thinks that people will pay any price for dolls, so they marked the Haunt Couture dolls up to be extremely expensive. <laughs> um, that's a video for another day, though. I'm getting off topic. With that, though, we have been through all of the Mattel Bratz dolls that were found. Um, I definitely think the designer did a good job. These look cute. The boxes look cute. But I definitely do not approve of the fact that this almost happened. I'm very glad that it didn't. <laughs> um, I don't think the dolls are that hideously ugly. Okay, the bodies are pretty bad. They look really tiny and childlike. Like, they took these, like, teenager char- these teenage characters and made them look like they're 12. So, it's weird. But, <sighs> I don't know. I guess all that really matters is that Mattel did end up losing their bullshit lawsuit, and the brand went back to MGA. Because I don't think Bratz would have lasted very long if they looked like this. It's almost like Mattel was trying to kill Bratz, in a way just to get rid of it. They wanted to acquire it and then kill it. Because at the time, Bratz was their biggest competition. So who knows, maybe that was their evil plan. They did release a cork board, basically, that just said that Mycene was there to kill Bratz. So you never know how petty like Mattel could be. I think this is a really interesting piece of doll history. Um, it's amazing that these were found. I talked to the person who found them, uh, the mini dot plastic user I mentioned earlier on Instagram. They're super nice, by the way. They sent me the link that I included in the description of this video. And overall, it's just like, they just said that they were looking for high quality Mycene artwork. And this was just on Google. This person's Squarespace website wasn't like hidden somewhere beneath some like ancient crypt, like on the dark web or something like it was just on google they just looked up my scene promotional artwork clicked on a thing saw it was attached to a squarespace website of a package designer they clicked on it and they found the mattel brats so that just goes to show that you could find anything anywhere like i don't know if it was on like the first page of google but it wasn't hidden at all <laughs> so i guess in short you could find anything anywhere and you just need to keep an eye out and look for it. Overall, I think this is really cool, though. This is a really cool thing to look back on. But ultimately, I think we're all glad that Mattel didn't end up with the rights to Bratz because, yeesh, that would have set a terrible precedent. Don't have an idea for something while you're working at another company because that company can now come after you and take it once that idea is successful. So, yeah, very glad that they lost that lawsuit. Um, I guess that about wraps it up, though. Thank you all so much for watching this video. It was fun to look back on this piece of doll history with you guys, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!